So my eyesight doesn't necessarily impact what my job is. And, and ironically, um, I work in the imaging group uh, yeah. selling products that have visual communication. And not only that, my job for you know, a good part of my career has been on uh, imaging communication. You know, all the imaging assets and video content creation and all that type of thing. A cartoon of a man sitting at a computer typing on a keyboard. The view zooms out and we see dozens of other identical men working in office cubicles. The screen goes black. The words working blind appear in green, typed out as if on an older style computer. Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Welcome back to the channel where we help you learn how to live your best blind life. We are back with another episode in our Working Blind series, and you guys asked for it. You wanted bigger companies. I don't think it gets much bigger than this one here, so I'm excited for this interview. Uh, incidentally, if you enjoy these and you would like to see more, I'm putting out a whole series during the month of December, so check in the video description for the playlist. All right, so I've got a gentleman here that I met last year at a conference, and um, it was really cool to meet this person, so uh, I thought I'd invite him on and he could share his story with you guys. Uh, his name is Eldeen. I'll, uh, I'll let him introduce himself fully. Uh, so, Eldeen, thank you so much for joining me. Why don't you let everybody know first about your vision impairment? Hey, Sam. Thanks a lot. So, I've got a couple of different things going on. Um, you know, I started off with astigmatism as a child. I, I started wearing uh, glasses um, from the age of about five years old. Couldn't really see much without them. My vision slowly started deteriorating over the years. So I'm currently at a minus and a minus 11 in, in my left and right eye. Um, but, you know, in addition to that, when I was about 20 years old, um, I started noticing that I couldn't read signs anymore that I used to read on the way to work. I used to drive to work and, um, you know, I thought there was something, you know, wrong with my contact lenses at the time. And I went back to the doctor and I'm like, hey, um, I'm not able to see. Could you check maybe my contact lenses are scratched up or they need replacing? And they, and they did a... Uh, um, a visual eye test again, which has got to do with optics, it's got to do with distance, and they basically couldn't find anything wrong. I could still sort of see, you know, with that, you know, is A better or B, one or two, that kind of thing, um, in, in a controlled environment. And um, weird story, on my honeymoon when I was 25, having a guy do reflexology on the beach, um, some guy who's turned out to be a retired doctor, he was doing reflexology, touched my foot in a position, and I winced. And he goes, oh, that's very really bad. This means you've got bad eyesight. And I'm like, you can tell by touching my foot. And he goes, oh, this is really bad. And then he felt my foot, and he said, left foot. And he goes, oh, left eye minus 11. Felt my right foot, and he says, oh, right my eye minus 10. So he not only could figure out that it was bad, but he could actually tell what my prescription was, which was <laughs> mind-blowing. And then he said, uh, touched another part of my foot and said, you got macular degeneration. And I said, what is that? And he said, you need to go and see a doctor, but you're too young for macular degeneration. This doesn't make sense. So needless to say, I get back to South Africa after honeymoon and I go and see a doctor and I say to him, listen, you know, an ophthalmologist, I need to be tested for MD. And he goes, I don't even know why you know what that is. You're too young, you're 25. Um, I insisted, they sent me for some tests and I showed macular degeneration. And uh, he asked me how I knew. I told him the story. He never believed me. He said, there's no way that anybody touching your foot can tell that you have MD. But that, that's how I discovered it. So basically, it turns out that I have uh, dry macular, macular degeneration. Let's get to what we're here for. Let's talk about your work. So uh, why don't you tell everybody where you work and your position and all of that? Okay. So I've been with uh, Sony a little over 18 years now, Sony Electronics. Um, I started in the company... Uh, as a producer doing uh, live shows, uh, events, and uh, trade shows for the electronics group. So if you have a look at Sony uh, as a company, um, we have Sony Corporation in, in, in Japan, who is our mothership, our headquarters. But we also have Sony Corporation of America over here, which is like the overarching uh, Sony, uh, Sony brand. And then within that, we've got several different companies. There's Sony Pictures, Sony Music, Sony PlayStation, um, we have Sony Electronics. There's, there's multiple companies 
uh, within the Sony brand. Those are the, those are the four major uh, big ones that are within Sony Corporation. Mm -hmm. So I work on the electronics group, which basically makes all the products that we utilize, right? So TVs and uh, uh, audio devices and, and uh, cameras and things like that. So I've been working in the in the uh, in the imaging group for a long time, and then the imaging group has expanded. So you know we introduced uh, cameras like Action Cam. Um, we also have the Xperia uh, smartphones that is within our uh, group, and then we have uh, Airpeak, uh, which is our drone. So we do everything from Airpeak drones, Alpha interchangeable lens cameras, both on the DSLR and the mirrorless side. Although we don't make DSLRs anymore. Handycam, Cybershot, our point and shoot cameras, our ZV line of cameras, vlogging cameras, smartphones. Um, so, so quite a lot of uh, technology. I was working out the other day that in my <clears throat> 16 years of being in the imaging group, I've been part of, I think, about 780 product launches. Wow. So, um, and most of those, yeah, most of those have actually uh, been the lead uh, content person launching those. Uh, uh, products. So from the time that we get information from Japan, working on the on the program, uh, getting all the content together and distributing that. And then as of the beginning of this year, my role kind of shifted a little bit again. So instead of focusing on the broader uh, uh, entire imaging uh, group, I um, narrowed my focus on two specific product categories. So now I focus specifically on our uh, vlogging cameras, our ZV lineup of cameras, which is what I'm using right now is a ZV-1. You can see it's got that fantastic, same thing. Yeah, I'm using, the, case the, I'm using the ZV-E10 for mine. ZV-E10, there we go. Yeah, I think I've owned most of those devices <laughs> over the years. Yeah. Um, not really, but I definitely had the Handycam. Mm -hmm. um, my very first couple of videos here on YouTube were on a cyber shot, old, old style cyber shot. Um, like I said, I've got the ZVE 10 here. I've got the a seven four. So I'm definitely, uh, f firmly yeah. seated in the Sony ecosystem as far as camera. Yeah, there you go. In fact, fun fact, I'm still using your battery in my a seven four that you gave to me at CSUN earlier this year. Um, oh, great. <laughs> yeah. So accommodations. So you said you've been doing uh, with imaging for 16 years. Um, I'm curious what accommodations you use now, uh, whether that's, you know, hardware, software, um, more time for projects, travel. And then I'm, I'm curious also how it is with the accommodation process now versus way back when, when you started, is it easier now? That sort of thing. So Sony uh, is actually a phenomenal company to work for. It's, it's, it's rated as one of the best companies in the world to work for for a number of different reasons. Um, and they have a lot of accommodations, you know. So it, I know that it's one of the most diverse companies when it comes to, um, you know, being uh, uh, both for, for men and for women and uh, LGBTQ community. We're huge. We're actually probably ranked as one of the, uh, highest accommodating companies in LGBTQ as well. So it's a very inclusive company when it comes to that. And the accommodations extend beyond that. We have a team within the company. I'm, I'm uh, on the board uh, of directors of that team. Uh, it's the access team. And, um, you know, it's basically the model for what we're doing globally. And that's focused on a number of different things. It's focused on not only uh, accommodations for <clears throat> uh, uh, employees, um, because we accommodate for any type of disability. We accommodate for, uh, like I said, any type of personality with the, you know, any type of color or race or anything like that. So a very open company in that. So being able to apply for things like if you need a specific desk, uh, if you're in a wheelchair and you need access to, uh, to have your wheelchair as a, as a desk that can raise up and down, they'll actually accommodate for that. Um, in my case, obviously, I'm looking for a larger screen. Um, I recently had to replace my laptop. Um, they normally only, you know, give people 14 or 15 inch laptops as your work laptop. I said, I'm, you know, low vision. I need a 17 inch laptop. There was no problem in getting that either. So there's, the, the company is, is um, very much focused on the employees and employee benefits. It, it's, a, it's honestly a fantastic company to work for for those reasons as well. We also work on not only advancing, uh, um, you know, accommodations for employees, but also for 
product development. We even have uh, uh, folks that are part of the access team that put uh, Braille onto uh, retail fixtures. So if you're going to go and buy you know, a, a, a wireless speaker, you can go in and you can touch, you know, feel the braille to hear, you know, to, it'll tell you what that speaker is and what it does. And you hit the button, you can hear what it sounds like. That's great. That's, I mean, that's great to hear. I know that, as I mentioned before, I first met you at that CSUN last, or I, I always yeah. say last year, but earlier this year. Um, right. And <laughs> that's the third time I've been to CSUN and Sony's always has a booth, always has a presence. So that I think that yeah. speaks volumes about Sony's commitment to accessibility and, and, you know, making products that are inclusive for everyone. Yep. Yep. The nice thing about being on the access team is I get uh, exposure to what's happening in the other product groups as well. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, cross product collaboration within the uh, organization as well, which is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, the products that you guys show at CSUN were fantastic. Uh, the accessibility features of the newest line of PlayStations, uh, you had the earbuds that had the the pass through sound, so you could hear what's right. going on around you. Those are really cool. You had the robot dog, which I don't know. That was just yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ibo, Ibo is fantastic. Yeah, a companion dog is a is a really really good companion dog. Well, do you work in an office? Do you work from home? Um, people are always interested in transportation. How do you get back yeah. and forth to the job to the office? That's, that's a really, really great question. So as I mentioned, I was actually driving up until even the beginning of this year. In fact, I drove to CSUN. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's one of those um, situations that it was around about that time that I was thinking, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this for much longer. So I, I say it's probably the only good thing that's really come out of uh, uh, COVID is, you know, the proof that people don't actually have to be in the physical location of an office to be civil. So coming out of that, you know, going back to my management and basically saying to them, um, you know, we've proved that I can work remotely. Um, I'm not going to be able to drive into the office, um, but, you know, I, I, I need a, the accommodation of working from home. And they've said, no problem. So you, you're, you're good to work from home. Um, the nice thing as well is that, you know, there are a lot of my colleagues that do, you know, live, obviously we all live in San Diego. Um, so if I do need to get into the office, I do have a network of colleagues that I reach out to and say, hey, are you going in on Tuesday? I have a meeting on Tuesday. Can I can I catch a ride? Well, you know, I, I, I really commend you on that, making that decision. It's That's a tough one for a lot of people, especially if you've been a driver your whole life. Uh, it's a tough decision yeah. to make, especially on your own without being told, because usually it's, you know, the doctor's like, all right, you got to stop driving. But to, yeah. to make that decision is is not easy. But ultimately, I think I always think it's the right one because, like you said, right. um, just for safety for yourself or, God forbid, for other people out there. Well, that brings us to our, yeah. our, our final question about how people react. You know, how are your colleagues, your coworkers, um, are they supportive? Have you ha ever had any in, in all of your years there ever had any negative experiences? No, not really. Um... Now, I don't think I've had any negative experiences at Sony. I've had negative experience at other locations, other places where, um, you know, you, you, well, I, I was somewhere recently and I, I had to pull out my scope to look at something really close and the person burst out laughing at me and like, oh, you're blind, huh? And I'm like, how is that a joke? <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> and they're like, it's just hilarious seeing you like struggling. And I'm like, thanks. You know, we, like if you saw somebody honest. in a wheelchair, would you be laughing? Yeah, yeah, would you be laughing at them? So. Yeah, but no, actually, um, you know, we, we're in a we're in a uh, a very inclusive environment at Sony, and I think people know that they can joke with me about it, and you know, I appreciate that because I'm a big jokester and I, I play pranks on people all the time as well. So I'm I'm open to that as well. I don't I don't get offended by anything like that. Um, but you know, I've never really come across anything that's been that's been bad. It's always been a you know, a great place to work. And I think if you find an organization um, that says these things outright and demonstrates them uh, and, and, and leads by example, the employees generally do so as well because they, you know, they, they, they will follow the, the culture within the organization. And, you know, if you're fortunate enough like me to land up in an organization like I have, um, you know, that's a great place to Great place to, to make roots and, and, and set your career. 
Uh, if you find yourself in, a, in, in an organization that not everybody is, is following those rules and, and it's not being set out by, you know, head senior management and, and the culture, it's something that you maybe want to develop within your organization or choose not to work there. You know? so. Yeah, very good point. That actually brings up another question. Um, several people have asked, when did you divulge your vision impairment during your hiring process? Was it be early on? Did you wait till you were hired? Do you remember? That's a fantastic question. <laughs> it's been so long. That's a know. really good question. Yeah, yeah, it has been a while. Um, so I've always had low vision. So, you know, every every uh, job I've always had, it's, it's, it's always been the case. You know, the, I'm not being hired to uh, look at something um, critically. You know, I'm, I'm not being hired, uh, you know, let's say a, as a, a jeweler that has to inspect diamonds mm -hmm. and know that there's, you know, what the quality of diamond is. Because if my eyesight can't do that, then, they, you know, maybe that's not the career for me. So I always feel like it's the same thing that an organization shouldn't be asking you about your, uh, your sexual preference. They shouldn't be asking you about your religion. Uh, they shouldn't be asking you about, you know, your, your living situation, any of these type of things. Um, if they're not going to ask you about that, they shouldn't be asking you about your disabilities unless it obviously impacts uh, the, the job at hand. So my eyesight doesn't necessarily impact what my job is. And, and ironically, um, I work in the imaging group uh, yeah. selling products that have visual communication. And not only that, my job for you know, a good part of my career has been on uh, imaging communication, you know, all the imaging assets and video content creation and all that type of thing. So, you know, I have been focused on, on that part of the business, but it, it wasn't critical. So to go back to your original question, I never actually divulge it unless it's actually necessary. And I think it's a personal thing, like I said. So it depends on, like I said, it doesn't impact your job. If it doesn't, and it's not going to impact the role, you you could choose yourself as a personal thing, whether you want to divulge it or not. Awesome. Well, Eldine, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I think it's great information. I think people are going to enjoy it. Awesome, Sam. I love what you do. And, uh, you know, we'll see you at CSUN pretty soon. We've got solid plans already. So you'll see us there again. Awesome. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can connect before that. Yeah, I will be there. Okay. Well, thank you guys for Excellent. watching. Once again, another Working Blind interview. As I said before, if you like these and you'd like to see more, check out the video description for the playlist. And while you're down there, if you have any comments or questions, you could leave those for me as well. I'll do my best to help out. Like the video, as we always say, right in the biz, like, share, subscribe, all of that. <laughs> but that is it, guys. Sam and L. Dean, we will see you next time. Thanks, Sam. Have a good one.